I'm Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. This podcast is made in collaboration with the Jewish Journal. Everybody knows the old joke about Jewish holidays. Basically, all Jewish holidays boil down to they tried to kill us, we survived, they... Let's eat. Food and Jews is a millennia-old romance. And if you visit Israel today, there's no question that that romance has produced a lot of good food. From the empires of Eyal Shani, Asaf Granit, and Aharoni to the thousands of bistros, hummus shops, and falafel stands, Israel is stuffed with delicious food. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about today. Ruthie Edelstein leads food tours, she is not a certified tour guide, for Delicious Israel, or as Delicious Israel calls you guys, Delicious Experts. Delicious Israel is an organization that offers personalized walking, travel, and cooking tours for foodies seeking the real Israel experience. We're thrilled to have Ruthie on the podcast today to talk about some of the tastiest spots in Israel, just one or two, the colorful people she's met, and how the hell she ended up moving to the Middle East from Sacramento. So maybe we start... Maybe we change the position of your beer because it's, it makes I'm me afraid, so nervous. But I didn't want it here. Near the equipment. You took it from like one corner to yeah, like the other. Yeah, we can okay, do it okay, like just, this maybe. Oh, that makes me like nervous. This. So do you guys do the big spots? Do you guys do like Asaf Ganit, Eyal Shani... So our tours are more, um, we do we do specialized tours that might bring you to those places, but our tours are more about getting back to, you know, to the markets, to where, uh, you know, where the foods are coming from. I would say um, Eyal Shani, Asaf Grani, they're doing amazing things with Israeli food and they're doing, you know, all of this kind of fusion stuff, which is really, really cool, but it's super easy now to come to Israel um, and forget about, you know, the, the roots of the food. Like like the little soup places. Exactly. And, and the soup place. and Exactly. The places, you know, that provided the inspiration now for these really cool popular restaurants. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is that in Shuk HaKarmel, for example, which is the most popular, you, there is no such thing as an authentic tour, food tour in the Carmel market because it's not authentic there anymore. It's been... What? What do you mean? It's too... Too many tourists there. It's not. It's not really authentic. There's nothing to do with the original, like the Carmel Market was in the '60s, '70s, '80s, but that's, even '90s. That's not true at all. Okay. <laughs> no, like that's not true at yeah, all. Like so. it, it's not what it was because it's changing with the times. And the whole thing is, is like, yes, there are tourists there because it's a really cool place to see. There's a lot of cool things happening there. But, um, you know, on a recent Friday. Like I ran to ran into all of the other food tour guides that I work with just there hanging out. And we were like, yeah, this proves that like it's actually a cool place to go to. This is really where people hang out. And that's the thing. It's like now you've got these restaurants that are utilizing all of the fresh food right next to the fishmonger. There's, you know, the fish and chips place and meat market now has M25. And so that's a, it's a hipster place now. No, the but even even of- not the new places. You have places like Malakai Shimon yeah. that's like a little tiny little like hole in the wall literally it's like a hole in the wall that you go under and the guy has been making but if soups the market there has for more tourists than than authentic like you know hard working tel avivian people who come there is it really a market anymore but it does yes because first of all it like it has all of them <laughs> <laughs> it, it has those tel aviv people like it's hipster why because tel aviv's hipster now yeah, but- so the authentic tel avivians are hipsters now and they're still coming to the market what do i do on a friday if i'm not working i go i eat hummus i grab a beer and as long as i'm in the area i run in to buy cucumbers and so it still is authentic it's just changing with the times to me well as be, I, I represent the israelis <laughs> here on this on this table so what's the thing about the israeli markets what's the magic of them the magic was it was cheap everything was cheap and you would see them there, hardworking people who can't, because people who could earn would go to the supermarket. But people who had no money, they would go to the market for a cheap, uh, authentic. So when, when the hipsters come and when the tourists come and when hipster restaurants are, are opening, right, 
It's uh, I compare it. It's not only a caramel market. Also, how many? Let's let's go a quick overview on markets in Tel Aviv. So we have the caramel market, right? Mm-hmm. What else? We have Hatikva, where Delicious Israel leads tours now, and that's very authentic. Yes. We have Levinsky Market, which is not necessarily a market, but it's a really neat area. Again, being a hipsterized, but also with amazing history that's still very present. Mm-hmm. We have Sorona Market. Which, <laughs> which, which is <laughs> obviously the best market in <laughs> Tel Aviv. What's Sorona Market for the audience? Sorona Market is like Faneuil Hall in Tel Aviv. That's... That says, I mean, that probably says something for for who? People from East Coast Jews. Okay, okay, fine. For I mean, it's like it's, it's like the mall version of a market. Basically, it's the classy mall. It's version glitzy. Of a, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's high end. It's a fun it's like place a to meet. You can get a muff, like You a can get you can get a cupcake there for like fifty shekels. Well, and that's the thing. It's not it's not cheap at all. But the Carmel Market is still a place where you can go to. Like, why do I choose to go to the Carmel to buy vegetables over? Because you're the a grocery fryer. Store? No. The prices there are, are very high. But they're still going to be cheaper than the grocery store. And also, you're still going to yeah. be able to like, uh, today I went there to buy one mango, okay? Yeah. I just wanted one mango. And Sometimes I, a girl <laughs> needs a mango. <laughs> and I walk down and I'm like, okay, those mangoes are 10 shekels per kilo, but like they look bad. These ones are 14. They look good. Yeah. And then I got to choose. Whereas right. if I'd been in the grocery store, there would have been one mango to choose from and it would have been a certain price. To me, the Tikva market, which is here also, so yeah. maybe I'm not that objective, but uh, it's the only actual like real market left in in Tel Aviv. It sounds like you just want poor people. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the matter of ambience. When you go to the Tikva market, poor you, see, I, 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 you see like... You want to be the only modern person at the market. I want to be the only hipster around, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> essentially. No, but it's uh, that's the thing you're looking for. That like Even when you go abroad, you want to see the locals. You don't want to see tourists and hipsters. But I am a local. That's like, that's you, you have to accept who the locals <laughs> are the hipsters now. hipsters invaded, like... I am not a hipster. Uh, hipsters invading is like the <laughs> biggest oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> hipsters will never invade yeah. anything. They need someone else to come and <laughs> prepare the grounds for them to... <laughs> to come but yeah for me like the tikva market there you get real there you can feel how tel aviv once was and this yes. is the thing like when you go to the, the caramel market it's hard to get a glimpse to the real history of tel aviv because because people can't imagine how it was here in the 50s in the 60s it wasn't it was nothing like it is today right so it was nothing like it is today in some ways, but that's actually, you absolutely get the history by going to the Carmel Market. I mean, I was just telling you guys that I've had people come on my tours who, you know, I'm like, okay, so we're in the Carmel Market and we're in the Yemenite Quarter. And they go, oh, Yemenite Quarter, like, what do you mean? And like, they have no idea that there's Jews that came from Yemen. And there are still Jews, like I always say, there's two kinds of people that live in the Yemenite quarter. There's the people who were born and raised there by Yemenite Jews, and then there's the hipsters. And, you know, they're like coexisting, and the hipsters right. are kind of keeping these other cool places alive because they like those things. Right. But I, I, like, I always go to where there's a parking lot, and I explain that this used to be sand. Like, this was nothing. And I guess... I think Hatikva is an amazing market and we've started leading tours there and it's really cool to see this kind of off the beaten path thing. Um, it really is in many ways the old Israel, the old Tel Aviv. But the Carmel market, I think, is still very authentic depending on what you think of the word authentic, what you think it means. I think we disagree on that. But um, but it, there's so much to see there. There's so much to learn from. And um, I mean, I still like... You I tell love it. The, st- the story, the history of Tel Aviv, like when you do these tours. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing with food tours now is that it's not just for foodies. They're for anyone who wants to see a city in an interesting way. So we have a tour that goes from Jaffa, from the port there, uh, and it ends up at the Carmel Market. And you're essentially like tracing the journey of the Jews from Jaffa out into the Jewish city of Tel Aviv. And... Um, and you're like, what better way to learn than to also eat? You know, it's a fun way to see a city. Um, so, yeah, we, but it's not just the food. It's the history with the food. You guys probably get some pretty colorful characters. Yes. You're talking yes, about people who have no idea that there were Yemenite Jews. Are there 
like other are there there you get also non-jews we get a lot of non-jews um we get people who are coming here for you know other religious purposes but we also get people who are here because they've actually heard israel has really good food specifically they've heard tel aviv has really good food and they want to see it and they have the cookbooks by otto Lingi and by michael solomonov and they wanted to come and see the spices for themselves and like, like that's solomonov, not our- michael solomonov was here and in- yeah, check it, check that on the podcast. That's history. a good place oh, yeah. to plug it. Yeah. But that's definitely a reason, <laughs> not a reason that anybody goes to Montenegro, speaking of. Like, no one not, goes to Montenegro yet. for the good yeah, food. Because Roti just no, came back from I, Montenegro. I and ate a, we had the La I ate a whole fish every single day in Montenegro, which is not something I have the money to do here in Israel. And was it good fish, Because though? you don't buy so your good. fish in the, in the Tikva market. You know, in the <laughs> it's still market. expensive. Fish is expensive here. Yeah, but and you, yeah it's not fresh. Yeah, there it is fresh. You're getting it like the sa- you're basically your getting salmon coming, from Norway. Yeah. And you like, don't buy your salmon. Tuna, your tuna comes from Egypt. But you don't buy tuna. You buy other fish and they're fresh from the port and they're good and they're cheap if you go to places without hipsters. Yeah, but those are the fish <laughs> they just found that washed up on the beach. <laughs> That's how they get those fish. They're just like... I mean, maybe. <laughs> no, but um, so yeah, Montenegro. Why did you bring that up? No, you were saying that there. the food here, <laughs> that people come here for the food, non-Jews come, oh. but from Europe or from the states. Or so okay, so the people that are like, you'll get like, I just went to Montenegro for five days because I could pop over there, and we get people coming from Europe that are popping over to Tel Aviv. It's just another fun stop for them. And flights it, are cheap now. From flights Europe. can be very cheap. Like we get a lot of people that are coming from Berlin. Um, a lot of people that are coming from England, obviously, and and like, yeah, they heard the food was good. We still are getting less Americans, I guess, that are coming just for the food, because I think when you leave the U.S. and, you know, fly across the world, you're going to there's going to be more than, you know, one reason to come. But we do get a lot of non-Jewish Americans who have heard amazing things and again, have the cookbooks and like that they want to see it. So tell us, you know. You promised us a couple <laughs> secret spots. Okay. So tell us one of like, one of the, you probably can't tell us like the most amazing. I'm assuming you're not going to tell us the most <laughs> I'll tell amazing. you some good stuff. But so, tell us one of the like best spots in Tel Aviv. Okay. So there's one thing that's no longer a secret and that's the beef Chernikovsky. Okay. I believe yeah, actually yeah. Michael Solomonov went there on, ah, so on, okay. um, on the Phil special. In Tel Aviv. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so that's like great. And I Just actually explained used to... what Sabich is for. So, sab- ugh, sab- this is where the history gets exciting. Sabich, some would say, is the only true Israeli food. Why? Because it was, I am speaking in the voice. Um, <laughs> sab- sab- Sorry. <laughs> Sabich basically was invented in post 1948 Israel. So much of our food here that we eat that's Israeli, um, I just did quotes, that's Israeli, is falafel, it's shawarma, it's hummus, it's food that's been in this Shuka. region. Well, wait a minute. Okay. It's food. That, those are foods that have been in this region for a long time. Then we have things like shakshuka and we have things like barakas that were brought over by Jewish immigrants and then kind of Jewified, Israelified, whatever we want to call it. Sabich, though, is a food. It's fried eggplant. It's hard boiled egg. It's salad. Where does the word come from? So, okay. So there are different theories. I go along with the one that Sabich is actually a very common Iraqi name. Uh, it was a common Iraqi Jewish name, and um, there was a man named Sabih who... Um, I would kill myself if I was named. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they used to try to get them to change their name to Svi, and he said, no, I'm going to be Sabih Svi. I'm keeping my name. I'm keeping my culture. It was his culture. first name? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah, it's a first yeah. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, it was you're his, legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> it was his first name. <laughs> and no, and he's basically the one who brought Sabih to the people. So all of the things inside of Sabih are what Iraqi Jews used to eat on Saturday mornings, okay? Then they came over to Israel. They brought with them that food. And what do you do in Israel? You shove food in a pita. They started eating this Saturday morning breakfast alongside pita. And then this Mr. Sabih man, he bought a kiosk at the end of a bus line in Ramat Gan. And he and his wife were like, we've got to start selling, you know, a substantial food item. So they started selling this sandwich that was inspired by their Saturday morning breakfast, but inside a pita. And the story goes that I went from, hey, Sabih, make me one to make me a Sabih. You didn't and, say and what it me... contains, the pita. So yeah, she did. She said fried, fried eggplant, egg okay. hard boiled egg, cabbage salad, tomato salad, trina, and amba. And With some amba. people put a potato in. Yes, yeah. yes. So Sabih Chernikovsky puts and a potato. And amba is? Okay, so amba is another great one. 
Amva um, is a mango sauce. Oh, um, you just bought a mango. I did just buy them, yeah, but, I'll be, but I won't be making my own amba. But amba is a mango sauce, and it, the story goes that it was created when um, the, there was a community of Baghdadi Jews from Iraq that went to India uh, for business purposes, and they were so excited when they discovered this incredible mango fruit that they wanted to send it back to, uh, to, to the community in Iraq. So in an attempt to preserve it, they packaged it up with fenugreek and with vinegar, and then supposedly when it got... To uh, to Iraq, it was more in this pureed version. Wow! I didn't but know, did you know that? No, I, I had no idea. <laughs> I just called it orange sauce. Orange until sauce. Now. <laughs> no, but it gets even cooler that Indians have a very similar sauce, and that's called embe, which I've been told means so amba means um, it means mango in Arabic, and I've been told that embe or something like that means mango in Hindi. Huh? Could it we, be that we influenced them to make that sauce? Is what you're saying. I That is not what I'm you're saying. You're putting words in her <laughs> mouth. And we do have to say, though, that Sabir, it kind of sounds like trivial, but like if you've ever had one, it's, it's, it's an amazing. Art. It's a work of art. You, you're happy that Sabir didn't kill himself. People? people. <laughs> yeah, like, it's unbelievable. No, also, yeah, also because, yeah, you need it needs to be good. With, no, but with, like that's the thing is that, yeah, there are good yeah. sabiqs and there are bad sabiqs. It can't sabiqs, be soggy. But like, it can't be I remember be you once bad? after a bad sabiq. I've, I've never remember a bad sabiq. <laughs> I've never had a bad sabiq okay. to this day. But, but Sabir Chernikhovsky yeah, so is like legendary. It's legendary. And people come on our tours and they're like, what is this? This is incredible. And, you know, like slowly, slowly, shakshuka has started popping up all over the world. I've heard there's sabiq at some restaurants in New York. And I think it's going to, I think it's the next thing. Damn. <laughs> okay, so Sabir okay, so, so, that's not enough. Don't so, think you're getting okay, away okay, with just okay, one. Okay, fine. So I'll tell you my favorite falafel place. Can falafel? I? No, okay, that's the okay, thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I have yeah, to say about falafel is I, growing up in Sacramento, I thought falafel was disgusting. It was typically like eaten twice a year or something at a Jewish event um, and it was like defrosted and it was really, really gross. It turns out falafel can be incredible but it has to be fresh. It has to be made with, you know, like oil that hasn't been out for days. And a loving hand. And a loving hand. Okay. So the falafel I like is actually just called Elad Falafel but he says it's called Falafel with a Smile. It's made by a guy, Elad, who's in the Carmel Market, the very authentic Carmel Market. And um, he's of Yemenite descent, and he makes this, um, he makes falafel, and it's super, super, super fresh, and it's so good. And people will try it, and they'll be like, what is this? And I'm like, it's falafel, and they don't believe me. Is it the me. green one? Is it the one with a lot of green in it? So there is some green in it. There's some Parsi in it. Okay. Um, but it's more just that you're eating it as soon as it's made. Like, he's yeah. literally, he actually just in the past month got a machine that does the process for him, but he, he used to be like a one-man show, making the falafel on the spot. Like lot's gotten sloppy. Yeah, you're saying AI <laughs> is taking over the falafel industry too? <laughs> taking over everything. There's a machine um, that does the falafel making? So now there's a machine that's like squishing the falafel and putting it in the oil. But oh, a lot so is, authentic. But El, no, it <laughs> is authentic. It is. Nice. It is. He's been waiting to pounce. Uh, <laughs> I, I gave you that. Okay. <laughs> there's a robot that makes falafel. It's not a that robot. Crazy? That's what I'm taking from this. <laughs> story there's a robot that makes falafel. he just stands next to a lot also smiling uh, is your falafel dish sir <laughs> his, name's Enjoy. Sa- his name's sabich <laughs> uh, okay wow so so fal- where is a lot falafel it's chernikovsky uh, by the guy by the way guys is on a street in israel named chernikovsky it's close to the carmel market mm-hmm. and then and then this one is in the carmel market this one is like um I actually don't even know what street it is. It's a side street that goes off onto Nakhla Benjamin Street. Ah, okay. So every side side street in the market. So if you're if you're what? (laughs) It's every side street in the market. No, but if you're walking down toward you know away from um, Kikram again, David, then you uh, turn left where there's a beer bazaar. There's two beer bazaars in the market, but you turn left where there's the small beer bazaar, and directly across from the beer bazaar is Elad, and. Falafel and beer go great together. It would together. be the second or third to your life. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've been? No. He's just envisioning. Yeah. Ah, okay. Vision. Uh, okay, so that's falafel. So, but you wanted something more interesting? Yeah. No, I was, yeah, because it's like Cause it, falafel. No, but that's what I'm saying. I want a place saying. that like, makes okay, you like... Besides, the best know, falafel like, in Israel is in Haifa. Like so. pita mefureket, or I don't know. Okay, so 
Well, actually, there was a great place called Junum, but now it's in Serona Market. And that's oh, like this amazing no. flatbread that they do all sorts of cool so things wait, on. So wait, but as I understand, you guys also do tours in Jerusalem. We do tours in Machane Yehuda. Okay. We, yeah, in Jerusalem. And there's amazing food there. I don't even know what you're going to say about Machane Yehuda. I don't deal with Jerusalem. I don't do Jerusalem. You don't do Jerusalem? He's never been, actually. <laughs> no, I've been, but... I'm more what? of a Haifa kind of guy. Yeah, how come yeah. you guys don't do tours of Haifa? We you should. Uh, we are open to doing tours of everything. You should hook them up, man. We'll yeah, talk. I can hook them up. <laughs> no, or can be the main delicious expert. But in before Haifa. we get to to Jerusalem, I want to say that now in Tel Aviv, the trend is uh, schnitzel in challah. Schnitzel. <laughs> schnitzel is <laughs> like the most Jewish. <laughs> schnitzel in challah. Schnitzel in challah. <laughs> Where do you get that? So. I, I, first, I had it in the Carmel Market, actually. There's this place called the Chomel uh, one. one. Oh, I had that. But it's... it's, was it's it, it, I had something on But recently, there. I was there, I ordered it, and it wasn't... It was so-so. They actually served me, like, a dry challah. Like, it was, mm. like, yesterday's challah, and it was very disappointing. But then, now, there's a, a place in um, Carlybach Street, I mm -hmm. think, and they serve it, and their queues are actually... And every day, like of hour, really? an hour wow. to get to get that, and now like an hour the, yeah. queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I don't get. I don't get yeah, that I, because I never it's like understand. It's, a, it's a legendary. Everybody's talking about this schnitzel and chala. And it's yeah, just schnitzel like, all that they offer. Nothing else. It's schnitzel and chala. They put also like a um, cabbage uh, salad mm -hmm. in it, and with a uh, with a uh, fries that is also trendy now, where you get half half fries. Like half, what, sweet half potato, sweet potato, mm. half potato. No, but do they put any sauces on the challah, or is it because that sounds dry to I'm me? I'm sure they put they put the the salad has mayonnaise in it. Ah, uh, co uh, coleslaw, coleslaw salad. salad. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So pretty cool. That sounds. But good. schnitzel in the challah, it's it's ingenious. Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah. So yeah, Jerusalem. Um. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know where you can get schnitzel in a challah in Jerusalem, but I imagine it's possible. Um. But Machne Yehuda is so we lead towards there, and we lead towards there both in the day and at night. Um. Because, because um, Jerusalem, the market has become the center of nightlife as well. Yeah. And and again, some might say, oh gosh, you know what happened to the old market and there's plenty of feelings on you know the changes that have happened but at the end of the day it's really really cool to bring tourists there during the day and say come back in five hours it, you're not even going to recognize yeah it's it. really cool how the the stands they close and then they put like pillows on them and, and it becomes like seats and for, the, for bars. the bars and also um all of the stores shutter like get shuttered and you see all this cool graffiti inspired by the bible by the torah um i say bible i'm in tours Inspired by the Torah, the homage, <laughs> the homage. Um, inspired by you know, like, you know, all the Zionist figures. And then yeah. you also started getting uh, owners of shops who are like, well, if you're going to graffiti my place, like do a picture of me. Uh, so, really yeah. Think. So it's really cool. It's like I think essentially it's the only market in Jerusalem, right? The only I mean, plus there's, yeah. you know, the old city, but uh, yeah, but, but the only proper food yeah. market like that. It's um, interesting that yeah. in Tel Aviv you have three and in Jerusalem you have only that one, that one. Four. You forgot about Serona, man. Well, <sighs> Come on. No, but also I think... <laughs> Serona, for the audience, Serona is not a real market. No. no. So, but uh, but mall, Hatikva, I mean, mall. we're talking about different areas, you know? It's yeah. like... When when like when the Carmel was established, it was out of necessity because they were so far from what was the Jaffa market. Right. Um. And so, you know, yeah, Hatika was also like, necessity. But like in Jerusalem, Jerusalem's huge. Like, yes. it would make sense that in different. But like, Florentine market is different from the other two, right? So okay, so the Levinsky market, Levinsky, which yeah, 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 which is in Florentine. Once upon a time, it was an actual market because again, it was very much its own area that needed a market. Uh, once the city became more united, there was no longer a necessity, like the need for it, and it was more just kind of, I think, an issue. Uh, so all of uh, all of the you know produce vendors they left, but anyone who had an actual physical shop could stay and so what levinsky market essentially is is these third fourth generation owned Spice, specialty stops spices. spices um i mean it's a lot of iranian persians it's a lot of um greeks it's a lot of turkish jews and so it's a lot now of third and fourth generation spices and all you know barekas and all of that 
It's also a minefield of dog poop and Mm -hmm. dripping AC. You just ruined the entire episode. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, but (laughs) I live in Florentine and it's Uh. just an awful place. No, 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 no. uh, The best way to see Levinsky uh, Market is with Delicious Israel. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Stick to Carmel. No sponsorship for us. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, from... I'm biased because I've been living there for two years, and the place is like pretty, pretty dirty. So f- I didn't start thinking like, oh, I would be happy to live in Florentine until I started leading tours of Levinsky Market, and I realized how cool the area is. No, there's some great places. There's Uzeria. Which yeah. is like a little tiny Greek fusion kind of place, and there's Dalida, and there's like a lot of great places in the market. But like the market, it, the area itself is just it's kind of it's upsetting. It's like they, I mean, it's um, it's Lower East Side. It's totally neglected. But anyway, that's a, that's a topic <laughs> for another time. Uh, so you guys do Jerusalem, you do Tel Aviv. Can you tell us about a place in Jerusalem? Okay, I know you gave us two places already, but maybe okay. Place in Jer- so in Jerusalem, my favorite is uh i love jachnum bar okay where's that in in machne Yehuda? there's one in machne Yehuda and there's one on hillel street i go to the one in machne Yehuda because that's where we lead tours and what they do there though in addition to jachnum is malawach so on a tour i'll get the malawach with tons of toppings and then you eat it kind of like a pizza but what's really really cool about jachnum bar is that it's taking these foods that were once upon a time you know eaten by Yemenites and Jachnun was on Saturday mornings and like they're open till 2 a.m. So and this is you know delicious slightly oily you know food so people go there now after a night of drinking. Mm, okay do you guys do so you guys do I'm Yafo so you said. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you said you do Yafo also. Yes. So you guys go to Knafe places? So we actually don't I don't go to a Knaf. we all do our own thing kind of but. Explain um, what's Knafe. Okay, so knafe is something you're going to find all over um, the Israel. Middle East and yeah, all over Israel, East. but all over the... I'm, I mean, so much of the food we're eating here, you're going to find similar things, probably with the same names, but maybe a little different, all over the Middle East. So the kind of knafe that we're eating here is usually the nabla style. So it's a cheese called nablusi cheese, which is like... Um, like a kind of chewy cheese, and uh, and then it's topped with kadayif with the um, you know kind of the pastry flakes. They almost look like noodles, and then there's sugar water and there's rose water, it's, and it's uh, orange. Usually. So it so it Sometimes. doesn't have to be orange. Usually, it's kind of like the color the, of this table. It's like wood colored. So so the orange um, is uh, unnecessary. It doesn't do anything for the flavor, and. I personally like the ones that are made fresh uh, and that haven't been like sitting out like that. And those ones, usually they don't feel the need to make them orange. They're going to be table color. But there's also a trendy place now in Jaffa. They do, they serve the, kna- the, the knafa with an ice cream. Yes, yes. Yeah, that place is what I was thinking of when you were talking about the lines. There's now a lot, like if you go yeah. there during the weekend, it's unbelievable. Yeah. There's like... They invented like the, the combo, essentially. But it's ridiculous. <laughs> I managed to it's go there nice before cream. the line Actually, started, and then there didn't. was an article they on didn't like, invent it? it. A guy on my tour invented it. What? I had a German chef on my tour who's originally from Turkey, but had been living in Germany. And he was like, here, come try this. And he had soft serve ice cream that we had gotten from one place, and he had the kanafe, and he just like, he like dipped it kind of like it was like hummus. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. That's a scoop. Because knafe can be kind of heavy, and so it's nice. Was that a play it's a on scoop. Yeah, Sorry, was, uh... I didn't stop for that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So, you were saying? No, that's all. Okay. Some more f- yummy food. <laughs> Tell us about more yummy food. No, I, I just wanted to mention that, like, outside of Tel Aviv, mm-hmm. if you really, if you're into authentic markets, unlike the ones we mentioned um <laughs> there's like the ramle exactly there's the ramle market yeah there's the lord market yeah which are cities like 20 minutes from tel aviv and they're like if atikva is hardcore authentic then this is even twice uh times 20 hardcore like but that's, but you're you're saying basically authentic yeah. equals like 
you can't want the markets to stay like a time capsule. You do. No, no because, because they're, they're not. They're it doesn't gonna work. Poor. They're going to be like, it's going to be poor people <laughs> that are like, how do you say? Like, uh, like hard working, low socioeconomic, yeah. like really. I mean, it's always going to be like that. But like, if you wanted to stick in the 60s, then they're just going to be like, it's going to be just like a rundown, awful place to be. No. Why? It's just know. like you want to be the only outsider there. That's the the point about be like when I don't know, maybe it's only me, but when I go to abroad, I want to go to the places where no tourist ha- has set foot into. Which which I agree is really really a cool experience, and people always say, ah, you gotta get to Cambodia before you know it changes and things like that. But on the other hand, like you go to a place like that and you see the way they're living and the way they might be struggling. And as much as it's really cool for me as an outsider to spend this one day seeing this thing, on the other hand, like, yeah, if they have the opportunity to improve their way of life, that's That's a different great. discussion, though. We're not talking about improving the way of life. We're talking about, about food, right? So if you want authentic food, like the Romley market beats every, even the tic- like it beats any other market. But, but it's all authentic food still. I mean... You can still go no, and a, get. A, so, I'm sorry if a machine is doing the falafel. Oh, let's drop the machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, robot, that, that robot. Tell, that tells, no, story, he, that it's, tells the story. No, he's doing it himself. He has a tiny bit of help now, but he's still very much doing it himself. It is still very, very authentic. But but in Ramle, you will not see hipster restaurants like or hipster places. You only see places that existed for seventy or eighty years. And for me, that's what I'm looking like. And when I go abroad, that's what I'm no, looking for. No, but first for. of all, you have those places in Carmel Market. You it's, have Malakeshi, like do. I said, here you have there. a couple here, other no, places. No, you that really have there. them there. But for every, for each one, authentic, like for each authentic place, there's a hipster place in the Carmel Market nowadays. Yeah, but, but how many but, places do you have that have been around for seventy years in the Ramle Market? All of them. No, no. come on. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. No. Also in a Tikva market. Yeah. The, these are like in a Tikva market, you have one new place. I don't know. But either way. No, it's... but at Tikva market, you also have newer immigrants that are selling there. Yeah. You have those new sh- those new uh, restaurants, the one we said. Just that one. Just no, that but one. you also have even I'm saying for, if you look at who's physically selling items to you, it's not like necessarily the great grandson yeah. of the guy who opened that market. Right, it's some other guy. I don't know. I feel you get like. To me, that's it's you know it's subjective for me no it's, it's a the, matter of fact <laughs> and you're wrong <laughs> no I, I get i get what you're saying and i think a lot of people do feel that way but i, I think if you took tourists I, to rumble they would like they, yeah they would, and, and we can but i also think maybe you need to take a closer look at the carmel market I've, i mean i've been there no i like i growing up my family would visit israel and i would go to the carmel market and i didn't realize there was food there I bought gold shoes there once and I associated it with like, that's where you go to buy, right. you know, junk. Yeah. But it turns out if you go further in and if you go into all those little alleyways, you do find things. And like, yes, I will give it to you. There are new things happening also. But um, but A, a lot of those things are trying to keep the flavor of the market in the neighborhood. Like Amalabia, I think is a really great example of that. Because um, it's it's this old style thing. What did they sell? In Florentine. Well, there's one in Florentine, but there's also no, th- <clears throat> yeah, but there's also one in in the Carmel Market, and there's mm. one in Chupa- what's Malabi? Okay, so Malabi, Malabi is it's like a panna cotta. It's a milk pudding. It's uh, milk or you know coconut milk mixed with corn flour, topped traditionally with pomegranate syrup, rose water, coconut flakes, candied peanuts maybe pistachios that it's kind of delicious thing. and it's Enjoy. delicious but what's cool about hamalabia is they also sell their own rose water infused beer so they're kind of playing with the shtick they give you uh backgammon boards to both you know use as a tray but also you can actually play backgammon but when you open it up it's usually bottle caps you know and it's like at night then it becomes a full-on bar and so it's hipsters drinking beer eating malabi and playing shish fish I will never sit foot there. <laughs> but that's only me. <laughs> that's only no, me. but it's awesome. Well, as I said, it's subjective. 
It's I don't know, man. I remember going to the Haifa market as a kid. And the Haifa market, like there's... Which, the I'm Piot sh- market? Yeah. In Had- okay. No, the yeah. Hadar. Yeah, yeah Hadar. the Piot market. And I don't remember there being one place there that was inviting. Because what did you know as a kid? No, but you were I stupid. remembered. <laughs> <laughs> you were maybe a stupid kid. Yes. I, I was a very intelligent child <laughs> with with a yeah. fine culinary taste. <laughs> I only ate at the finest French restaurant. You restaurants. were walking around the Talpio market and like, what is this? I drank this Merlot at is, six. This no, place I'm... is beneath me. <laughs> no, but I, I don't remember there being like any places that were very inviting in the Talpio market. It wasn't like... Inviting is subjective. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I can't argue with that. (laughs) It's all subjective. Yeah, fine. I'm just saying, I'm just stating my opinion. But before we wrap things up, uh, I was wondering, uh, Ruti, why did you become a food tour guide or whatever you want to call it? (laughs) Um, Well... Like you made Aliyah, right? I made Aliyah nine years ago. And Why? do you have another hour? Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, you know, I, again, I, as I told you guys earlier, my parents are not Israeli, just Jewish. My, um, my dad especially was a hu- is a huge Zionist. And um, I grew up really with Israel being a second home for me. So I did my junior year abroad at Hebrew U. And after that, I went back, did my last year of college. And it felt very, very natural to move to Jerusalem. So I moved to Jerusalem. I was there for six years. And um, I did what a lot of Olim do. I got into like marketing in English. Uh, And then about a year and a half ago, I discovered that people were making a living leading food tours. And um, I I love food and I love I love the history that goes with the food of Israel. And um, and so I basically, um, you know, found Delicious Israel, the company I work with, and I was like, I'll lead tours anywhere you want me to. I just want to be a part of this. So I started leading tours in Jerusalem, even though at this point I was living in Tel Aviv. Uh, And then eventually I started leading tours also in Tel Aviv. And like, it's awesome. I really love it. So you see yourself doing that for the the years to come. Yes. So cool. Wait, but you didn't tell us why you came. Ah, Oh, I thought it was kind of just like in there. Because it's cold in Sacramento. No, it's not. It's actually the no? same weather as Jerusalem. Really? Oh, Isn't right. it where, where um, the Coen Brothers film is? Right. Which one? The one I they made know. a TV show on. Fargo? Fargo. No, no that's not like, the same. Isn't Fargo, that Minnesota? It's in Fargo, Minnesota. You know, Sacramento. Ah, Sacramento, uh, Sacramento is California. Yeah. Ah, it's, it's the where capital. the guy told us so many anti-Semites are. They bit the shit out of him. In what? the other podcast, yeah. remember? In Sacramento? Ah, yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What was his name? The neo Nazis are there. Okay. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> Sorry, on that note, so you fled from now the, we know so why I you had have. a I had so a happy fled, childhood in Sacramento. You fled from the neo Nazis. <laughs> no, so I uh Sacramento is a great place to grow up, but even you know, I went to University of Wisconsin and when I graduated, if I wasn't going to move to Israel, it's not like I was gonna move to Sacramento. I would have moved to a big city in the US. Um but for me, listen, there's the ideal idealistic, you know, ideological thing, which is that like, yeah, Israel's, you know, 71 years young and I can be a part of it and I can do anything here, but still be a part of Israel. And that to me is really, really awesome. And obviously, you know, there's all the things we always complain about as well. But on the other hand, you know, it really is this place where like, I've learned in Israel to not to just live for the weekend. I find that people want to find joy in everyday activities like eating. Um, and, and like, yeah, it's just the life I want to lead goes with the lifestyle that you find here in, in Tel Aviv. Cool. My, okay. my, my answer is just like, I, I'm from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> so were, why wouldn't I? The yeah. New yeah. Like when yeah. the first rock was yeah. thrown at you. You were like, yogurt, I'm out of here. Actually, it was a yogurt. Huh? Yogurt, yogurt, yeah. yeah. No, but it was in Atlanta. Yeah. Anyway. All the same. That's another time. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks. Guys, so if, you, you. if you're coming to Israel, uh, check out Delicious Israel. You could search Delicious Israel on Google and you find their website. Mm-hmm. But can they book you specifically? They can book with all of us. But if someone heard the, the show and <laughs> said, You can okay. write to them and say, hey, give us Ruthie. Okay. Maybe I'll be free. Maybe someone else will be free. Fair enough. 
So guys, check them out. <laughs> Delicious Israel. Do you guys also have like a Facebook page? We have Twitter? a Facebook. We also have an awesome Instagram, which is just Ooh. if you feel like getting hungry yeah. all the time. Follow and are you, us on are you in social media also? Mm -hmm. At Ruthie Ariel. Cool. <laughs> um, so we before we go, we do a collaboration with the Jewish Journal. We spoke about it before. Jewishjournal.com, guys. So they have great columns. They have a podcast. They have podcasts. Yeah. Uh, check Maybe them it's out. We signed. Yeah. And um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> David Suisa and and JewishJournal.com. Check yeah. them out, guys. And also, we accept donations. So please go to TwinGB.com slash donate and help us out because we do it on our free time and we need your money to exist, <laughs> essentially. And to get more beer and wine. Yeah. yeah. That is it. Thank you so much for coming with me. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.